there is no rule book. There's not like a set, this is what you can do. One of the things I learned from having a broken heart is not something I ever, ever prefer to put anybody through. Going through my first divorce was psychological. Ultimately, you kind of have to go through one or two breakups in your life to prepare yourself to be good at relationships. When one experiences a breakup, it's like experiencing a death or a major trauma. A lot of people in our society form their sense of self by the relationship they're in. So when that relationship ends, it's like a whole internal dismantling of your world. It's very what we call dysregulating. In other words, it's like somebody came into your life and a bomb went off. with Jay Lavender. And although Vince Vaughn didn't take writing credit, he took, uh, it was his story. And he did a lot of writing on that project with both Jay and I. There's one scene in particular that um, was was the lemon scene, where they come home with lemons. And that, that was literally um, a scene that was taken directly from my relationship with my girlfriend at the time, my current wife. Um, where we were uh, we were in New York and she was hosting a dinner and she asked me for 12 lemons and it was rainy outside and I would and I went to a place and I actually found three and I was like oh I'm either gonna be on time with three or I'll find 12 and be late what happened in the movie happened at that at, um, at the time everything in there is just inspired by you know either things that I went through or Jay went through or, or, or Vince had gone through. Um, and yeah, we just try to, we really try to make that film feel like a real, like a real um, relationship. I think, you know, I think there's, everyone has their own path, definitely. You know, I've, I've encountered so many different people and their different practices of how they, you know, grieve, um, whether it be a, you know, a one night situation or a six year or 15 year relationship. Uh, some people like to hold on to things and remember, some people are immediate purgers, some people burn things, some people, you know, just hold on to things because they don't know what to do. And I think this is the kind of place where this is really for the people who don't know what to do with the items. Um, they don't want to donate it. They don't want to give it away. They don't want to sell it. Maybe it doesn't have any fiscal value. <laughs> I mean, it sucks. Uh, but the story is important. It's a sentimental value. It's the kind of things that you'd save in a fire. You don't want anything to happen to them. And it's nice to know that you have a place that you can send it where not only will your story be honored, it will also be kind of among friends and it'll help other people who are coming through. But I think that there's something to, you know, we have so many rituals in our lives in society. You know, we've got graduations and birthday parties and weddings and funerals. And there's not really anything for a broken relationship. There's not like a set, this is what you can do. I think it's important for people to be educated on what they're going through because I think there's such a sense of shame going through a breakup and people can feel like there's something wrong with them or it was such a bad relationship why am i so depressed um it's really for the best so why am i sad um people can also feel shame that the relationship didn't work out and it's important to normalize all of the different feeling states that you may feel um, you may feel two, <laughs> two different things in one day, they may overlap. It's also important to know, to normalize the idea that 
there is no time frame and that sometimes years can go by and you still may be sad about a breakup. It's not weird. It seems like everyone's doing wonderfully except for you when you're going through something like this and everyone else is having, you know, just the best time and nobody else hurts. Like, everybody does. Nobody's immune. I am a firm believer that you teach your children how to have a relationship. And even having, now having older kids, if you talk to them and you realize, like, you don't see, if they're not watching you play and love and argue and work through things, how do they learn? You learn basic things. I mean, you learn basic things about living with someone or basic things about, that you didn't really have to learn before. You just, you know, when you're young, you go, you meet someone, you hook up at a bar, you end up like, oh, what, what's going on with us? And you're like, I, I don't know. I'm, like you learn things in, in relationships and how to listen to people and how to say I'm sorry and things like that that are really challenging when you, for the, when you're, you have to experience them for the first time. So at the beginning of a relationship, I think it's easy to ignore some of the red flags because when we start a relationship, all kinds of chemicals in our brains are going off that actually mimic cocaine or any kind of like feel good drug. We, we become more happy, things don't bother us. We become more motivated to get things done. And it's hard to look at a relationship through the lens of objectivity when you so want to stay in this state of euphoria. And that usually lasts about 18 months into the relationship. Um, a lot of people think when that's gone that they're not in love anymore. Um, that's not the case, but I do think being in that state of mind does make us a little bit forgiving slash neglectful of noticing maybe some of the red flags that might be coming up. Um, with the other person. Um, I think it's just like if we were on cocaine, it's hard to attend to the things that maybe you don't want to see. And it's very easy to focus on the things that are making you happy and contributing to the ideal fantasy that you have of a relationship. My first marriage was very volatile, not healthy. Um, married young, 19 years old, and he was very, uh, I can't say that he ever got truly physical, but he was very psychological. And there were red flags before I married, but I was young and we always think we can change the other person or we ourselves can change to be something they want us to be, when in all actuality, that's not true. We are who we are. We all go through these things and relationships form who we are. And I think it's important to share those stories and people do, and it's for people to learn from, to cry with, to laugh with, to laugh at, to cry at, it's, it's everything. I got married at 21 that was very much out of the movies. It was, you know, we met and literally never spent a day apart. We're married within six months. It was that excited, like young, we're gonna get married and build a life and have a family. And um, yeah, that and that ended. Um, we got divorced in 2008. And that was really a difficult thing. I had relationships that were convenient. Um, and I was in my late 20s, early 30s when I met my second husband. And we met in a, a bar, which wasn't a healthy place to meet somebody. He was seven years younger than me. That age difference played a role in how our relationship 
panned out and we eventually got a divorce. And then I resigned myself to stay single for a while. I chose to buy a house and not date. And three years in and I decided that I wanted to meet somebody. So I went on Match.com and the first person I physically met was the man I fell in love with and married. And that relationship ended because he passed away of cancer. Yeah, I <laughs> exercised constantly. Um, I just would run. Uh, obviously having kids, you don't want to have that emotional, uh, I, I guess the raw emotion in front of your kids because it's confusing for them and they don't understand. And um, so I would run and I would cry a lot. A lot. It's the only time that you can just sort of be alone. And because I was so busy trying to make my world perfect, it was the only time I could just be. And it's hard to, it's hard to, you can't maintain that. So I would just, I would run and I'd just cry and I could come back from my run and clean myself up and pretend everything was okay. And it wasn't okay. There is no rule book. And I think this is kind of the closest thing outside of, you know, reading books and watching movies and listening to songs of like, but like, this is real. This, these are real people's stories. And you get to know that like, not only is everybody hurt and that that's normal and that there is no set grieving time for a relationship, which is also the other thing. Because you'll hear all of these things. And I think people grow up and they're like, well, you should be over it. Go get on to somebody else. And it's like, well, no, I'm still, I'm still in pain. Um, and that pain's real and that's okay brain responds to a breakup similar to how it would respond to any major complex trauma. When we're going through a trauma, there are certain parts of the brain that become underactivated. Um, those parts are usually our thinking parts, our planning parts, our parts that can focus, and the, the parts that become over activated are usually are the parts that feel things and act out on things and the parts that help us regulate those other feeling parts are under activated so it, it becomes a time of a lot of feeling a lot of impulse a lot of you know feeling like suicide is a good idea because the part of our brain that's actually thinking and planning, like I have children, this won't work out for them. Um, those are all kind of diminished. Going through my first divorce was psychological. We had separated quite a few times. And during one of the, I don't even know if we were, I guess we were separated because he had called me. I was at work and to make arrangements for our child. And during that, he was telling me that he was seeing somebody else. And during the conversation, it wasn't nice. And I remember feeling helpless. And the things he said to me, I love him. I let him change who I was. So I walked into my boss's office and told him 
because I had a family emergency and I needed to leave. And what I remember is going to the store and buying sleeping pills. And I had alcohol at the house. And I took all the sleeping pills in the packet and thought I drank enough alcohol to put myself to sleep. And I had a guardian angel who knew when I left work that something was wrong. And he happened to call me and I happened to answer the phone. I don't remember it. And he knew instantly something was wrong. And he called the police and the paramedics and they came to my apartment and sick on me. Saved my life from a suicide attempt. And I was in a psych ward for five days unable to see my child and sorry my family I was blessed I have a phenomenal family they supported me and they helped me through it and uh, I learned something from that lesson nobody else's Nobody else's opinion of me is worth my life. And in that moment, I was willing to leave my son without a mom and my family without a daughter or a sister. I'm thankful that not only did I get to see my son grow up to be an amazing man, but I got to get married and have another son. And I wouldn't had I accomplished my mission that day. It's interesting because I've had people of all ages give me that sentence. In other words, a 15 year old and a 65 year old will tell me, you know, but what if this is it for me? What if I'm single for the rest of my life? Everybody thinks it's, it's over for them. Anything you're going through in life you know, you just, it's, it's, it's incredibly painful, but you will learn from it. I wish someone had told me that it's going to take time and that's okay. That you're not going to get over it in a week, in a month, in six months, maybe even a year. Maybe you'll never get over it. And that's okay. And you're not alone because there are people all over the world doing the exact same thing to some different degree. And it's actually when you're the most connected because we all, <laughs> it sounds a little bit pessimistic, but it's, you know, people being in pain is a little bit more common than people being whole. That it's okay. You're gonna be okay. It's not going to hurt this bad, always. No matter how bad you hurt, your life is worth everything, it's precious. And don't take it for granted, and don't let somebody else take it for granted. I will say that one of the themes that we had talked about while writing it was that sometimes the person who you learn the most from isn't necessarily the person that you end up with.